expecting me, a very daunting task with um, the clock ticking down there uh, from eight minutes. I feel a little bit like Usain Bolt. Um, I hope I don't come out of the blocks too, too early. Um, I'll go straight into um, that I, you, I've mentioned that, or uh, the previous two speakers have mentioned that there are different terms, global education, development education, um, global learning, and I actually think that development education is quite a good term for what we do in development education because it is a field that is determined by two, if you like, fields and the debates and the ideas and um, the policies that are um, happening in those fields. Historically, development education is very much um, um, comes out of development cooperation. Um, missionaries, development workers coming back from the field and realizing there is a job to be done in terms of raising awareness at home um, about the things that they have experienced. Um, so we are very much determined in development education by what is happening in development cooperation and the debates that are happening there. Um, for example, the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals, is a debate that is happening in the development field, but it's also happening in development education. We're also um, um, concerned with all the debates or very much um, have, to, have to respond to the debates and policies in the education se um, sector. So the whole question around the knowledge society, active learning methodologies and all that, development educators have to be very, um, very, very clearly um, watching those policies and finding entry points, for example, into the curriculum, into teacher education. So it's a, a concept that is um, working at the intersection of those two areas. Um, very briefly, um, to explore it, there's a very explicit focus on social justice, globalization and development, and um, Vanessa has explained it much better than I can do. Um, the key word for me here is justice. It's moving people from a charity model to a justice um, perspective. I think that's a very important one. In terms of development, there is a focus on multiple perspectives of the story of development. So it's not that idea that we have a linear um, notion of development that we develop from, um, that they develop to where we are, or that there's a, a kind of a linear line of, of development. There are multiple perspectives on the story of development, and um, development education is challenging um, those stories. It has also very clear roots. People working in development education have roots in and very strong links to civil society at home. So a lot of people are activists in their own communities. They um, link local and global issues. Um, um, they show how things that we do at a local level have an impact on the global level. Um, so a very important link that I think um, adds to the to the creativity of, of, of the development education sector. It is, in the education field, a participatory and transformative learning process. Transformative means that the analysis is that there is something wrong and you need to change, you need to transform um, things and development education is all about um, finding um, 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 ways um, to change things. A clear focus on active global citizenship. Empowerment is a key aspect of, of development education, not just learning about global issues, not just being informed by it, but also empowering people to do something about it. Yeah? So it's not leaving the learner in this sometimes disempowering feeling of, oh, the world is basically a mess, but, but I can't really do anything about it. So it's really important to give um, people means and, and the skills to, to, to work on those um, issues. Four key dimensions that I would like to mention. The first one is um, that development education works on values and perceptions. We come to an issue very often with a lifelong history of misinformation and misconceptions. So it's about breaking those um, misconceptions down again and, and reflecting critically. Values. Um, stressing the positive values of um, human beings, a general concern for the well-being of others, not just others but also the planet um, is a very important one. All those extrinsic values, um, care for others, empathy, um, they are very important. Um, also an appreciation of and respect for the needs and rights of others is a very important one. To, 
to work on those values, you need certain cap capabilities and skills. So you need to be able to reason. You need to be able to think critically. You have to be empathet empathetic to, to people. This also um, means that you have to work on knowledge and ideas. So it's not just about process. It's not just about um, I can do this. It's also about really knowing your, your, your stuff. And what I've mentioned already, experience and, and, and action. It's learning through doing, but it's also active citizenship. Um, so if you, can, if, if, you, if you like, it's a holistic concept that engages the person, um, the mind, the heart, but also the feet and the, the hands. Um, I'm going to skip because I wanted to address very quickly um, those three points, de development needs, development, education and awareness raising for three reasons. It needs public engagement, um, it needs a global civil society and development needs also new paradigms. Um, why do we need um, public engagement? Duncan Green in his book from um, um, Poverty to Power says it's very simple. Two things, we need active citizens and effective states. And development education is all about um, um, the, 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 the active citizenship um, part of that. Why public engagement? You could say, well, leave it to the experts. We were much better in doing this. We just need the public to support us a little bit. Um, but we need really deep public engagement, first of all, because it provides legitimacy to what we do. Governments, NGOs, everybody needs legitimacy to do um, um, the things we are doing. After all, it's the program of the people, um, overseas development programs and, and, and all that. Secondly, we need engaged individuals because they make a difference as consumers, as activists, as, as um, volunteers. They make a difference in the world and we, um, and, and we need them. It also opens the space um, for a systemic change. This cannot be done by public information or by top-down campaigning. This is not possible to, to, to achieve by that. And that's why development education is so important, because it provides a participatory, a transformative, and a value-based learning process that leads to sustainable, the key word here is sustainable, engagement for positive change. We also need a global civil society. Why? because the challenges that we are facing are global challenges by now. They are not challenges of the South, they are not challenging, uh, challenges of, of um, developing countries, they are challenges that involve all of us. Um, climate change is an example. This is no longer something that can be done by doing um, um, projects in the South. It's something that actually involves everybody of us. Um, inequalities, um, both at a global level and, and, and locally, um, we have to address those challenges and the shifting po um, geopolitical structure. The MDGs were very much a G8 um, framework. We are now in G20 or even G20 plus. So um, we need to be aware of those um, global challenges. And those global challenges need global solutions. So it can't be a solution, seven goals for the south, one for the north without any targets. Um, it has to move beyond that. And that's why I think development education, and um, I'm almost on my last slide, um, development education is a very important one because it overcomes this binary between the powerful giver and the grateful receiver, which um, is a very important thing that needs to be overcome in terms of um, um, uh, working on the challenges that I've just mentioned. It's also about responsibilities and shared responsibilities for a shared future rather than um, telling people what their responsibilities are. Um, development education is quite good, well placed because it has always been influenced by non-European um, things. I'm going to s um, skip the last slide because it's, um, it's basically the three new um, paradigms. They are not new, but um, development education has to offer something to all those paradigms, human rights-based based approach, a very important one, promoting the rights and responsibilities to enact your own development, um, and development education can offer something through the empowerment of people beyond that north-south thinking. Um, we have something to, to offer to development effectiveness. It's, it needs to be critically assessed. There needs to be critical voices in terms of how we do development and, and development education can um, work towards that and policy coherence to development. I think it's quite clear what um, development education can, can offer. 
there. Um, I would like to finish with a quote from, again, Duncan Green from his book from Poverty, um, Poverty and Power, and he puts the challenge that we face in the 21st century very bluntly. He says, this century, humanity will either sink or learn to swim together. If this is true, I think the question that we need to start the discussion with is who needs swimming lessons and who should be the swimming instructor. Thank you very much.